journey's end is also a beginning. Sun and breeze bring a first reviving whiff and promise of the world of holiday. From office and kitchen, school, factory and mill, and escape to the seaside of Lancashire. Seven o'clock. Any idea where they're all going? Well, I shouldn't be surprised if it's Blackpool. Blackpool, known to millions of Britons and millions from overseas. Four, five, forty-five. Having a great time here in Blackpool, being swimming every day. That run passes through a special photoelectric cell, and on go the lights. It's big, and it's fresh, it's extravagant. <laughs> And what is most important, it's proud to stay that way. Along broad back streets where days all have the calm of Sunday afternoons, you're at the core of Blackpool's success. Bed, breakfast and evening meal for around £1.50 a day and all the comforts of home away from home. Oh, she's a nice lady, Mrs. Godworthy. <laughs> Bed, breakfast, and evening mall. <laughs> I got there last Sunday. Walked up the drive, knocked on the door. She opened up. She said, what do you want? I said, I'm looking for some cheap digs. So she stuck her fingers in my ribs and said, that'll be two bob. The boarding house is the quintessential Blackpool institution. When boarding houses started in the 18th century, Blackpool hardly existed, yet even as early as 1760, Mrs. Whiteside opened what's alleged to have been the first boarding house in Blackpool. Along the promenade, every single house is either a boarding house, or as it's sometimes more grandiloquently called, a private hotel. Now look, I'll give you two keys again, Keith. Huh? Your bedroom key, your front door key, so it doesn't matter. Uh -huh. You know where everything is, and you know where the room is. Okay. We used to get parties and they didn't matter if you'd only bets for 30 and 45 came. Three in a bed, there was, there was no, no objection to it. They liked to do it, but not today. Are you catering for the new generation? Well, I'm catering for a mixed generation. I'm mixed. I've got some teenage boys in. I've got an elderly couple. I've got a granny and granddad and grandson. We have a regular clientele that come back year after year because they know that we provide good accommodation, which is clean, and good food. And they know that when they go out of the house, they'll go out with a full tummy, you know, so they don't have to buy a lot of food when they're out. You know, they know that they get good food in our dining room. No fancy frills, but that's the way the regular customers like it. Oh, yeah. Lovely. Yes. Thank you. Everything's just ordinary simple, good food, yeah. and it suits them, they have that, they go out and enjoy themselves. To the Pleasure Beach, the young ones, to the parks, the old ones. That's Blackpool. Behold Blackpool, buffeted by boisterous blasts, bashed and battered by bursting billows. What wicked, wet weekend weather. Spray, seaweed and salt water soaking streets and sightseers. Simply shocking. Astonishing for August and desperately disappointing. Dispersing disastrous damage and dismal destruction in diverse directions. Gladness, gaiety and glee. Disgusting, all gone with the wind. The gale which has been sweeping Great Britain vents its fury on Blackpool, but the strong sea walls stand up to the onslaught. The northwest enjoys the same rainfall as the Amazon rainforest. I'm staying out for the summer, playing games in the rain. It's not raining. The gills and the fortune got me fooled again. The high wind which gave Mr. Chamberlain such a tough crossing to France strikes Blackpool. 
but Blackpool can take it. They might have hit my childhood. Blackpool, annual maker for eight million people, rings down the curtain on one of the sunniest summers in living memory. Theatres cater for those who feel the need for a different one each day. Theatres, sun lounges and orchestras are to be found on all of them. The largest of the three is the North Pier, 710 yards in length including the jetty. Thousands stroll here each day, thousands more relax in the sunshine. There's a fascination about piers. Everyone gets a kick out of being allowed to walk out into the sea without getting their feet wet. Looking at people enjoying themselves is certainly part of the enjoyment that a pier offers. Oh, dear. What do you think about what they've done to the pier? Well, they've modernised it, but I don't think they've improved it. When I come to the end of the piers here, the frontages of all your piers, you've got your, your south pier, your central pier and your north pier. And I look at them and I remember what they were like, the beautiful Victorian wrought iron architecture. And it seems you've just swept it aside and replaced it with something which just isn't considered. It's just ramshackle to me. Well, I mean, how would you justify it? Well, I, I don't agree that I think it was ramshackle before, the, before we altered it. <clears throat> you take the, the frontage here, we had an old turnstile. Everything was set back more. We had an old turnstile then, another old turnstile there. Yeah. With, as you say, with Victorian buildings that were dropping down with chocolate paint. You could have uh, restored them. This just looks like Newport Pagnell bloody service station. No, I don't. I, we've, we have replaced it with, with something that the public want, the, the public want. Leisure centres, they want to we have a beautiful show bar, the Merry England bar, which is, is going back in time. We have the... A, 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 Beautiful tree in, in the middle of it there, it's been a simulated tree and you you can sit round the tree, you have old bars, you have old uh, saddles, warming pans, we're trying to create a, an age there in Merry England going back, we, we want happiness in Blackpool and that's why we, we built this, yeah, but you can not have... drab old Victorian ideas, yeah, we don't want that. I know, but this has just been thrown up, I mean no, you can't no, justify no, no, this no, here, no, let's no. look at it. I want to tell you about a lovely place down by the sea. It's not in France or Italy. It was made for you, it was made for me. The place I mean is Blackpool. There's a lovely beach and a lovely prom. The brass bands play tiddly on bum bum. You'll hear the boats say e bum. A right old place is Blackpool. If you can't sleep after five and feel glad to be alive, you're a Blackpool bird.
all is, except you. And we're having a great time for some fab new rides. But the old roller coaster is still my favourite. Shouldn't have had hot dog first though. I feel sick. During my sojourn through this Vale of Tears, many sights have thrilled me. Dawn flushing the sepia sky over Kowloon. Processions of faith along the banks of the Ganges. A sunset streaking across the Caribbean. But they all pale into insignificance when compared to the excitement I felt when I first saw Blackpool Tower. The highest rise in Britain is the Blackpool Tower. And the lifts work on the same principle as colliery lifts. Capable of travelling at 800 feet a minute, they carry visitors up 480 feet. The tower itself is 520 feet high. Blackpool has a reputation for fresh air and fun. And even if you're not keen on fun, there's still lots of fresh air to be enjoyed up here. Well, I remember coming here as a, a kid to the tower, and uh, we're coming up here, and I was quite frightened. I wanted to hold onto the side. I wasn't keen on the height at all. At this time of year, I got to replace or check some 10,000 lamps on the towers because they get battered over the winter in the winds and everything. Uh, and one of the other jobs that I'm doing is um, actually cleaning the walk of faith. There's a glass panel in the floor and obviously it gets dirty underneath. The thing about it is it's, uh, it's 300 foot up in the air so it's slightly different than a normal window to clean. Concentrates your mind when you're at 300 feet. You don't get a second chance if you make a mistake, that's it. At the base of the tower, magnificently housed between its four massive supports, is the most unique, the most beautiful circus building in existence. Opened in 1894, when Victoria was queen, and described at the time as a majestic showplace of gilded arches and cascading fountains, the like of which will never again be built. Do ringmasters really say, roll up, roll up, the greatest show on earth? Um, not really, any, no, not so much nowadays. You know, I, I mean, my But you do use a lot of superlatives, don't oh, you? Yes. It's always the greatest, the yes. most magnificent, I'll, the world's most fantastic. I'll stop him doing this in a minute. Uh, come on, son, there's a good one. Come and sit down, there's a good one. <laughs> Another kind of slow traffic moves across the promenade, the circus elephants taking their daily exercise. Mr. Blackpool, Reginald Dixon, gives recitals in the ballroom. The idol of millions, he's played to audiences here for 30 years. Magnificent ceiling murals occupy an area of over 2,000 square feet. Two thousand five hundred people can take the floor at the same time. Four thousand others can watch them. And here's a money maker that only Blackpool has. Hurry, hurry, hurry! The side shows of Blackpool await the eyes of the curious. Fattest and thinnest, tallest and shortest. Blackpool has them all, the best and biggest freak show on earth. And the crowds roll up and stop and stare, feel a little pity perhaps, and move off to where there's more fun for sale. All the theatrical razzmatazz of bingo is larger and livelier and twice as much fun in Blackpool. First number, 41. Align on your four corners, please. 41, your first number, yellow. Yellow, 45, 45, yellow. Green, 49, 49. Blue, 20... The holiday industry in Blackpool has an 80 million pound turnover. 
and much of it's based on the fact that there's always somewhere to go along the promenade and golden mile if it starts to rain. The machines are always rattling with activity. Even when the sun's shining outside, there's a cluster of hopefuls waiting for the fruit machine's harvest. But now for the really big jackpot. Blackpool. If you're looking for youth, this was the ultimate. Tots triumphant in the final of the Baby of the Year contest. And this being the age of the beauty queen, a girl can't appear in public too early. Chosen from 5,000 babies from all parts of the country, 14 of them were presented for the judge's verdict with all the assurance of Miss World candidates. The winner, her head quite unturned by success, was 16-month-old Julianne Waterworth. Master of Ceremonies, Bruce Forsyth. Also officiating was the Mayor of Blackpool. For being Baby of the Year, Julianne won 500 pounds and a crown. She didn't seem to want either. Six BBBs, Blackpool bathing bells, are backing backless beachwear this year. Some are one piece, others two piece, but there'll be no peace until the wife gets one. After choosing the beauty queen of Great Britain, Blackpool sets about finding this year's cotton queen from among the 19 lovely finalists. At first sight, it seems strange that the stands are mostly filled with women, but probably all the men are waiting at the stage entrance. And here comes the winner, Doris Bauer of Bolton, with her attendants and the 18 other finalists, each representing one of the cotton towns. come back to Blackpool to one of the greatest welcomes ever accorded a football team. Yes, they're the Blackpool boys who won the match of the century at Wembley against Bolton Wanderers. Heading towards the tower, the procession continues its triumphal journey. A hundred thousand loyal fans give a cup winner's reception to Harry Johnston and his team. It was always a great moment when you paid your ninepence. You were in. The moments of drama lay ahead. Football, like most things, was not yet a branch of the entertainment industry. The coach arrives at Blackpool's town hall, and 15,000 people surge forward for a closer glimpse of their heroes. The crowd roars for Matthews, at long last a holder of a cup winner's medal. Modestly, he replies. I do want to say what a wonderful reception you have given us, and... I also want to say that I am told that by one or two people that I was the match winner. As a matter of fact, I don't believe that for the simple reason we have here 11 match winners. Already the team have vowed to do their darndest next year to keep the cup in Blackpool. We took our pleasures duly. Most of the boys I knew played football as well as watched it. For working class boys, it was the game. I played myself in a team full of pretty rough lads, pretty poor as well, enjoying such salubrious jobs as sugar boilers and brickies labourers. Now, after decades in the doldrums, the sun is finally shining once more on Blackpool FC. The club's spectacular win over Cardiff City yesterday has catapulted them back to the top flight of English football. 
here there is jubilation that Blackpool is now a Premiership football team. Some have even lost their voice celebrating. I'm speechless. My bro, I'm not yesterday. I can't, can't believe what they achieved yesterday. It's fantastic. From Lancashire and Yorkshire, they pour into Blackpool determined to have a grand holiday and everything's off the ration. This, for instance. It's not North Country roly-poly, it's Blackpool Rock. But we still don't know how they get the name right through the middle. Now take a look at what's going on there. Baz is making letters, I do declare. There goes a B and an L and an A. Violet sets them down on the tray. You see that thing like a big white cone that's the middle of the rock all on its own. Now the letters are wrapped around in a coat of red to keep them sound. <laughs> For over 53 years now, Basil Hargreaves has been at this game. B L A C K P W O L. There's beautiful girls, beautiful hair, beautiful scenery everywhere. It's gay and bright, day and night, and the people all treat you swell. In B L A C K P W O L. Blackpool. There's oysters and all, in August, thou knows. What Lancashire masticates in August, London sucks up in September. Traditional English fare. Blackpool's answer to French cuisine. The chipped potato. The chip. Greasy. Doesn't have to do you the world of good. A hazy, greasy, euphoric dish. Highly recommend. through the year, work goes on for the great day in September when the fabulous illuminations will be switched on. From one end to the other, the promenades will be a blaze of light. 75 miles of cable will be laid, 350,000 coloured lamps will dance and glow in the annual display of dazzling splendour. Quick sketch, a few scattered thoughts to back it up, and three years from now, it'll be transformed into another of those super spectacular, kaleidoscopically dazzling tableau, and all the complicated backstage work goes on the year round at the Illuminations Depot. Artists, moulders, electricians, joiners, mechanics, painters, the best part of a hundred of them all told, dedicated to the daunting task of injecting new life and hard cash into the sagging end of season holiday scene. Every year we inject into the display a number of new features, probably a quarter or something like that, uh, and the rest of the, uh, the equipment which has been out on a previous occasion is redisplayed in a different place, in a different way, so that the viewing public see something completely new each year. The First Lady of the Skies, 002 Concord, flies over Blackpool, famous not only for its tower, but its equally famous illuminations. The illuminations are Blackpool's way of having that final end of the season fling. Female impersonator Danny Naru is there to switch on the lights, which first went on 60 years ago. I welcome to Blackpool Miss Jane Mansfield in your name, in the name of the people of Blackpool. It's pretty obvious that she's better known than most folk who've been here to do this. Uh, job tonight, uh, 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 to do this job as it's been done. 
It's very obvious indeed that you won't, you don't want to listen to anything I might have to say. And therefore, I have now very great pleasure in asking Miss Jean Mansfield to switch to switch on the autumn illuminations of 1959. That's the most fantastic thing I've ever seen in my life. I'm completely speechless. <laughs> oh, thank you so very much, all of you. It's just it's completely breathtaking. I'm without words. <laughs> In the past, Blackpool's famous illuminations have been turned on by an assortment of film stars, politicians and disc jockeys. An old war horse can do better. Red rum passes through a special photoelectric cell. And on go the lights. Gorgeous blokes from Wigan. It's a transvestite show bar, and I could offer you a job there if you shave your legs. So, what do the girls make of their town? It does need regeneration, yes. Yeah, we just need... Some nice hotels. Some nice shops. Some lovely shops. Some nice restaurants. Some nice... Re a, a, nice a, restaurant. Nice restaurant. a nice restaurant. A nice restaurant. A nice restaurant would be nice. There's gotta be something better than this. There's gotta be something better to do. Just heard that there's some thick millionaire bloke from America coming over, so I put my American outfit on. You know, one yank and it's off. <laughs> Driving to a British seaside resort, Blackpool, in a funny little British sports car with a naked lady statue and a giant urn on the seat next to me is, above all else, fun. And for all our serious side, the British have always been rather good at fun. Coming up next this evening, we're rounding off our year with English National Ballet in the wings of their Christmas show. A real money spinner, the brand new Nutcracker has to be just perfect, but will they pull it off on such a tight schedule? Agony and Ecstasy is next. <laughs>